what's going on fish heads Jen Cravasi Jekyll Bates and today this video is for you guys that have maybe thought about doing more than you're currently doing maybe it's a dream of yours to do full-time bait making painting maybe you've said yes to a client for a massive run of baits and you have absolutely no idea how to achieve that goal this is for you guys today we're gonna paint something cool a bunch of times in a relatively short period of time let's do it I've made your life a little bit simpler today because I've already done some base coats for you guys. We don't need to watch me paint white 33 times. 33 is the number of baits that I've got on display for you guys that we're going to paint. We're going to paint one pattern and that's going to be a crappy. Most of these are going to a tournament angler who has ordered them. If you're going to do a lot of baits, one pattern at a time is the most effective, efficient way to do it. So I've got these lined up. The white's already on here, the base coat. We are doing a northern crappy pattern for a tournament angler of mine who shall remain nameless. Most of these baits are for him. But in order to spare some uh, confidentiality and make sure all my contracts are in order, I'm not gonna tell you who it's for. We are, however, gonna show you how I go about setting up and painting in this process. If you're noticing one thing, you're noticing that I have a ton of helping hands. That link is in the description below. I highly encourage it. Get as many as you can. That's a key. Or however you display or paint on a bait, if you get a bunch of those, that's it. That's the secret. It's not much harder than that. The rest of it is just color coordination. If you're going to do one pattern, then you're going to do one color at a time all the way down your line. I don't necessarily think I need to time myself, but we're going to see how long it takes me to do 33 baits of the same pattern and go. On this northern crappy pattern, I'm going to be using some iridescent yellow. That's going to be the first color that we lay on. I am going to work light to dark on this one. I've kind of been mixing it up a lot lately, and to be honest, you haven't seen a whole lot of me because I've been painting furiously. For, uh, for Mike at Bullshad, which has all been swim baits. It's all been like lots and lots and lots of swim baits. So this is just a fun little video for me to make for you guys. And it does serve a purpose. I know one of the things that I have talked about, at least in my social media pages, is not giving you the same thing that I've been giving you for years and years and years because that really doesn't show my progression as an artist and it doesn't help you in your progression. This, I think, has a purpose because it's actually going to show you something different about how to do a lot of the same thing. And that can also be a helpful tool when you're selling. I'm just going to pull the first bait from the left. We're going to go down the row and back. So if you guys get dizzy, I'll try not to keep you too, di too dizzy. But... I am going to be moving back and forth. And you can see there's a little bit of background from the previous pattern. I just put one coat of base because by the time we're finished this pattern, whatever was on here underneath, these are Strike King 10XDs, um, that is going to go away. You won't even know that this was a splatterback, which is what the pattern was. So, like a sassy splatterback because it had a lot of glitter on top of it. So I'm just laying down the very first color in this both sides and one of the things is that you will run out of paint quickly I'm not really blasting the paint at it but I am kind of going a little quicker than I normally would just because for production sake you need to learn how to work a little faster a little more efficient so that's the long and short of it I'm just gonna be reloading and talking to you as we go through this and I'm going to try and do a start to finish. My uh, pressure on this California Air Tools 8-gallon oilless compressor is right around 25 to 30. And that's going to give me enough pressure to throw base coats on. It's also going to give me enough pressure and a little bit less pressure to, uh, to keep from throwing paint all over the place.
And again, I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to how many base coats. Again, once you layer up your baits, you're going to lose whatever was behind there. As long as you've got a fairly decent amount of base coat, in this case, um, somewhere around here is my golden. This golden titanium white has become my base coat. It's even, it's fairly thin, uh, it covers pretty evenly, and it sprays very well right out the gate. No need to thin. So I have graduated from Createx on that into gold. And if I notice that there's a little bit of that, remember that acid stuff we talked about a couple years ago? If there's any of that, I just come over it again. But again, the, uh, the name of the game here is production. So all I'm doing is I'm taking each one And I'm just putting on these base coats and then we'll go back and we're going to do the same thing with the stencils. And the stencils I'm going to be using today are sponsored by Anarchy. Brian over at Anarchy has been generous to a lot of painters in the, uh, the world, as has Russ Allen. But on this particular occasion, this video is sponsored by Brian over at Anarchy. Thank you, Brian, for the stencils we're going to be using today. And you'll notice there's little, place, little places in here where it hasn't necessarily covered. Again, that's all going to go away. And if you pay a little bit of attention to what you're doing with the stencils down the line as we put those on, then you'll be able to cover anything that might have been gapped. And you'll notice that on this bait, I'm adding a little bit of iridescent yellow to the bottom half of this. There is a strip, if you'll look at the picture somewhere here or over here, I'm not sure which side I'm going to put this on in post-production. You'll notice that there is a thin strip of light color over top of the yellow towards the back of this crappie. I just want to make sure that this is an even and you want to try and stop your airbrush right about at the, uh, the gill plates where they start. It's a little less significant on these Strike Kings because there is no gill plate per se. So you can kind of break the rules on those. Although you kind of want to try and stop right where you would normally find the gill plate on a fish. Keep the bottle handy so you can, normally when I'm doing detail work, and you'll notice wherever I'm at is where I'm going to set this bottle of paint so I can just pick it up and keep rolling. What are these baits you say? Well, there's Strike Kings in here, there's six or seven Duo Realis 120s, 120s. I've got some nondescript, no-name wakes in here. These little flat sides, to be honest, I cannot remember where these came from, but they're going to get painted up as, as well. And then just a couple of wakes in here. And these wakes I got from uh, Crossroads Customs. Always try and give you the names of the places that I've got. And, and again, I have not ordered and, and uh, they can tell you I haven't ordered blanks in a long, long time because I really haven't needed to because I'm pretty much only painting swim baits. But I have kept the clients over the years that have been involved in tournament angling. I get a lot of requests for can you paint this, can you paint that. And I wish I had the time to paint for everybody. Unfortunately, it's unrealistic that I'm able to paint as much freelance stuff as I used to be because between Bullshad and Ketchco and tournaments, I stay pretty much slammed throughout the year. Um, you are more than welcome to, I answer every email that I possibly can in the order that I get it, and I try and answer questions as well. 
please don't be offended if I don't get to you within like the day or a couple of days, I, um, even on text. I look at my phone a couple of times a day. Uh, most of that stuff is family and business. And I promise you, I will get to you guys as soon as humanly possible. I try to answer questions as much as I can on these videos as well. Uh, but again, just stick with it. Don't give up on me. I promise I'll get to you as soon as possible. But I just can't do the volume of stuff that I used to do freelance. I'm pretty much finished with this iridescent yellow, but I am going to go back and touch the bottoms with a little bit more white. The reason is there's a fade involved in this. If you're looking at the picture, there is a fade. So we just want to make sure that we get that fade in there. And make it look like it's an actual fade. Not just a straight white line. So we just go touch these up a little bit. The other thing is that after you've been using an airbrush for a while, you'll find that you really don't have to figure out where to put the brush. It just kind of comes second nature so you know your placement is good. I'll just bring that fade up. Yeah, I, I see that. I'm not sure what that is, but we're going to cover it. It's going to be gone. And then the same thing. Just hit the bottom of these. Just a little bit of white. Just come down both sides. Just once. You can see I'm pretty much rolling through these. There it is again. What the hell? No idea. There we go. And if you don't want to watch me do this 33 times, you can skip to the next section of the video. But again, it's just repetition, repetition. Now see that? I do want to go, so I'll pull this out of line. I'll go back and hit that one more time. Some of you guys might be asking in your mind, do you lose production quality when you're working fast? The answer to that question is, depends on the pattern. If you're going to be doing intricate patterns, I don't recommend you do a heavy production. Especially if you're not used to doing production runs. Let's finish that up. I'm going to roll through the compressor going on. It doesn't stay on for a very long period of time. I'm not going to skip doing anything on camera. So on the couple of pieces that I see that I need to go back and recoat this yellow like that on that side. And there was one more that I saw. Not that one. Nope. Where did it go? I sworn there was like one more. This one. There we go. I'll show you guys what I'm doing. Because you should not come away from this video thinking that it took longer than it did on camera. 
but really going back is not that big of a deal but be mindful of that as you're going down the line if there's things that you think can't be forgiven and you need to touch up stop what you're doing go, don't go to the next color go back and hit that color hit it again until you got everything the way you want it one of the things that I'm going to do with this is add just a little bit of this opaque lilac to the very top section of this before I start laying the black down. The reason I'm doing that is because if you look closely at this picture, and might it be a reflection? Possibly, but I did get with the client, and he's like, yep, that's there. And you want it super, super light. But we're going to just put that purple racing stripe right in there. As light as light can be. Just make sure you're consistent with all of them. And then just run it all the way down your, your line. Yeah, it's bugging me too. This little spot. Can you even see it? There it is. That spot. We're going to cover it with crappie pattern, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, it bugs me too. I don't know how it got there. No idea. It's not the pattern below it. And I haven't been painting anything else this morning, so it's got to be that, right? Pressure is still consistently around 25 to 30. The difference is I'm barely touching this trigger. Barely, barely. Might it be boring painting only one pattern? Yeah, it can get boring. But as far as production, if you're doing a lot of baits, or you have a client that has asked for a lot of the same, the best way I know how to teach you, and there may be other ways, it's entirely possible. But this is about as assembly line as you can get. without having one and being a big production company like Strike King or Rapala or Rapala depending on where you live in the country I don't know if we'll be able to get through all of these with just one coat of purple in the cup but we're going to give it a go Just be consistent. And again, before you attempt to do stuff like this, make sure you're proficient enough with the airbrush to know exactly where to start and where to stop. And when you hit that, that trigger, to be confident in where that's going to spray. And that, that's really the only tricks to this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over top of all of these with a quick moss green. The moss green is almost non-existent on this one because it's so dark. These, this is obviously a breeding season pattern that we're going into. So all I'm doing is quick, quick on the top. We'll go backwards this time. I'll, since I'm already down at this side, 
I might as well run in two. Just quick shots along the top. Go ahead and hit the face on this as well. Face. Up one, middle, back. One, middle, back. Just try and hit the basics on that. If you get this, there's the acid. See, I can't control it. It's fun, but not always. So we're gonna, as that dries, as we get on the line, I gotta come back and touch that up. Because that is a, not intended on this particular pattern. Just three quick up and back on these little flat sides. up and back. And if you go off to one side or the other, you can come back on the second pass. Put these in front because I have the rest of these to do. So now I hope it's kind of making sense. If I'm a little quiet on this, it's just because I'm trying to concentrate on laying this down exactly where I want it to go. Keep on rolling. The biggest thing that I've learned in the last year or so is how to build layers from the inside out, which is pretty much what we're doing here. It looks a little whack when you start out because you're like, what in the world? How are you doing lilac and iridescent yellow? And it, it kind of looks crazy until you start to put your, your, your detailed layers on there. And when you start to do that, all Next of it kind of falls into is just for the face, the cheeks. It's a little bit lighter. It's a, it's a mixture olive. And the mixture is one part gray, one part moss green, and one part um, burnt sienna. And we're just gonna color in right around the eyes. And again, on, on something like this, I am gonna keep rolling as that air compressor kicks on. Because I want you to understand that this can be done within a reasonable period of time. Um, I've been asked how many I can do in a day, even with swim baits. The answer is somewhere between 40 and 60, depending on the pattern. Most people don't believe me. Um, but the ones that do believe me have done it themselves. And again, if it looks odd, it's just because these are the base layers that go into making the bait. And then you bring the detail 
over top of that. I've gone back and forth with myself on a couple of different techniques, um, bringing the bait to an exact point where my hand stays the same as I move down, and I found that that's probably not the best, at least for me, because I need to move my wrists around just a little bit, because if you hold your position the whole day for eight to 10 hours a day, your wrist is gonna get really, really tired, and it's gonna start to get sore. And that's one of the fastest ways to get onset carpal tunnel. And if you paint every day, all day like me, you want to move your hand around. Some people have asked, should you wear a wrist brace? I don't. Um, I find that I lose a little bit of dexterity and the ability to kind of move my hands around and do detail work. So I like that freedom. to just move around enough to get this pattern in. And again, I'm just putting in the face. And then we're gonna have, obviously, the stencil pattern over top of that. And then a couple of neat little detail tricks over top of that. And that's basically the entire pattern. It's just a different way to do it. It's a very efficient way to run this many baits. And some of you probably already know how to do this. Some of you may be doing it already. It's just something that I haven't taught you guys before. Not because I wanted to keep it all to myself, but for the past couple of years, I've kind of been really, really busy. And I haven't had the time to slow down and go through processes the way I have in the past with you guys. And for that, I apologize. I really miss teaching as frequently as I used to. And I get a lot of comments and emails and so forth on the social media platforms that you guys miss it too. So I will do my absolute best this year to give you as much content as I can, especially when it comes to teaching. I do have an intention on teaching you next level type stuff. I have a lot of new things that I use that I didn't necessarily use before that I want to go through with you on how I use them. And it may not be how everybody else uses them, but at least you're going to get an idea of what you're looking for. Now, I don't know if you can see as this dries. I'll take a still shot of this on how this iridescent really comes out as it dries. It's got a real pretty sheen to it. The other thing that you probably want to get a hold of is making sure that you are prepared to do the run and not have to stop and look for anything along the way. Have all your tools ready, have your paints that you want to put in this pattern ready, or at least within arm's reach of you if you can see mine. I don't really have it shown on the camera here, but let me pull the camera up for you guys. Everything that I need is within an arm's reach at any given time. So that makes it a little bit more efficient. I've also got a long bench to work on. I even want to make it a little bit longer in the end so I can add more, more of these helping hands on and do a little bit faster. So I'm adding just a regular old black to this and then we'll trick the black out as we go. This is a small pattern and I kind of do it a couple different ways. So I, you see this is not wrapped around here. I'm not laying this and curling it around like some of them because I like a little bit of depth. And if you kind of pull this out just a little bit, what you're going to find is that it shoots good. And then you get a little bit of under layer on there. And then you come down, do it again, come down, do it again. So that you get all that stuff you're looking for. And you add a little bit of depth underneath of that. You're going to do the same thing. Let me try and explain that better. I'm not sure if I'm making any sense. But if you look at the angle, I'm going to turn this. The angle that I'm laying this on this bait is about like that. It's a 45 degree angle off of the bait. It's not flat and I haven't curved it around. I'm just laying it out so that when I spray this, I get a little bit of depth underneath and then I can come through 
do the next layer, come through, do the next layer. And that builds depth behind it because you get that real light haze underneath so that your second layer, I, it just for me, that looks a little bit better. Now on this particular bait, as you get up towards the top, it gets a little bit darker and a little bit darker. So there's a little bit of overspray there. So we're gonna do that to make sure that we represent that darker layer up top. And then we'll do the other side. We're gonna finish one bait at a time. Um, the only reason we're doing that with this is because I have two on here. I can go straight down the line and just flip it and do one side at a time as we go down. But if I have two baits on here, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish that up. And then come back, do that heavier layer on the top. There we have it, one more on the belly. And that just gives you a nice representation of depth on here, which I love in my baits whenever I can get them on these patterns. Come back. And on, on the top, you can curve it a little bit on this back layer because you're really just over spraying. Now, yes, you're not gonna leave this green on here. You're gonna come back and this is where you curve it. And make sure you get the very back of this as well. Maybe one more just to represent that darkness on top. And we are far from done on these, but I just kinda wanna show you what I'm doing. Same thing here. Hit the bottom, hit the belly, come back and hit the top again, back and hit the top again. Same thing on this one. Angle that out 45 degrees. And after this set, I'm gonna just stop talking and start rolling. Hit the back. Move it just a little bit, hit the back again, get that overlap, flip it. You kind of want to blot this off as you go because this will pick up paint and you don't want to pick up so much paint where you're actually laying the back end of this full of paint onto your bait. That would be bad. Get that depth. Get that depth. Same thing on here. Just turn it to where it works for you. On there, you see that little hint? That's where your depth comes in. You do it again. Do it again. Hit the top. And one more time across. You get that nice dark. And then come and do the back. And that you can definitely overlap and curve around because you really want to get as much detail in your pattern as possible. Can you do this for every pattern? Yes, you can. It might not be as quick as this crappie pattern, generally crappie and things that are simple, like a sexy shad. If you're just doing a simple sexy shad or a citrus shad that's got three colors, one stripe down the middle, the shad kill dot. Um, those are usually the quickest. The more intricate ones, I can get through 30 or so in about three hours. So I can double that and hit about 60 a day if I absolutely need to. And yes, that applies to swim baits as well. That's generally all I'm doing these days um, as opposed to the little crank baits. Come back through. And 
if it gets too gunked up and you want to clean it off, just some soap and water or water, warm water will do it. And there's six. And here comes eight. So it's just the same thing over and over and over again. Repetition, repetition, repetition. And practice. Becoming proficient with your airbrush, where the brush is hitting your baits. See, it's starting to get a little gunked up, so I'm going to pull all that off. That's why I keep this down here. I have several layers of it. It's just a sop up paint. I used to have really cool, cute little stickers and decals, and those all live over here now. So it's a little bit different. Now, I did say, ugh, the acid look, and I don't want that, but I think by the time we're done, you're really not even going to know that's there. Add the depth. Remember that angle we're working at. thing with this is to keep your hands steady on the stencil. You don't want the look that I call stutter stencil where your hand just kind of pushes and you get that stutter step on there. And then a little bit darker down the back. And then just make sure you're hitting all your marks there. Hopefully you guys are getting something out of this. Just come back and lay that dark side.
when you get a lot of paint buildup, just soap and water and a brush. as hard as you guys think. But you do see by this point in the video that it can be done. I think our time has elapsed roughly a little under an hour. So just be methodical. Know what pattern you're doing ahead of time. And follow through. That's it. Use the tools that you have. If you only have 10 helping hands, then if it's crankbaits, you can do 20 at a time. Uh, I've just happened to use it like this because it's steadier than this tiny little thin lip that has a tendency to slide back and forth. And I have a tendency to heavy hand these stencils sometimes, so I'll push them over. Um, but if I do it like this, it's good. But if you have five, you can do 10 if it's crankbaits or five swim baits. But just whatever number you have, stick to one pattern and your productivity and the volume will increase for you. That much is a given. And don't forget to come back and hit. top of that and then wipe it down get that extra gunk off you don't want that build up at all just don't want it now are we done after this no we still have several layers of detail we want to put in now on these, the uh, stencil isn't quite as long as the bait, so be mindful of that. If you're doing swim baits, generally on swim baits, I'll flip it like this and then just do sections, um, depending on what swim bait I have. Now also, you see what I just did there? On these duos, the eyes on our pattern is black. So on the duos, I left the eyes in. It's just one less step. Again, makes it easier in, in production standards. Then I'm filling in the eye. So that's already done for me. Leave the eyes on there for this pattern. And then just paint them black with your airbrush. And they'll be the prettiest, shiniest eyes you ever did see. Now on this, you got a little bit wider of a back than this flat sides that I were doing. So you might want to just hit a couple different sides there. Times on your sides. How many times can we say sides in a sentence? Does it matter where you start? Not really. As long as you're comfortable with it. And again, I'm holding that bait or the holding the stencil out it's a 45 degree angle just to get that depth in and you see how that happens it's easier to see on this one for some reason maybe because there's more length in real estate but I've got that fine mist of a crappie pattern 
underneath you come back make it a little bit darker and all of the sudden you've got depth in there the only reason that I'm hitting it is every time on the same spot it's because I've just been doing it for so long if you need to be a little bit slower when you're doing eyes then you can just try to, there we go and then just hit that back a little bit deeper a little bit deeper there's that and then just quality control check as you go along make sure that there's no real weird spaces that you didn't hit with paint if you needed to hit them and again if you need to come up here and be a little bit slower and target your eyes a little bit better by all means you can do that misconception that you can't do a lot of baits by hand in a day it's just not true yes you can how long did it take me to build up the volume of stuff that I have seven and a half years I started out with maybe five helping hands a few colors the primaries just like you guys and I absolutely did not know what I was doing. I sucked really, really bad. Today I don't suck. I'm not the best by any means, I don't think. Uh, but I'm definitely at a level where I feel I'm proficient. Almost through it. How many we have so far? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. We've got all the base and general detail on 21 out of 33, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Yeah, somewhere in there. So not bad and I'm right at about an hour 15 minutes
coming down the home stretch it gets a little bit easier because by now you should be rocking and rolling with this pattern and then just go back and QC it real quick make sure you hit everything you needed to hit make sure all of your eyes were sprayed if you left the eyes in if not and you have a bunch of extra black eyes for a pattern like this or whatever pattern you're doing then by all means do that afterwards and hit that well, we're still hitting that top a little bit heavier and then go back and hit it one more time on this back side that's pretty much all there is to this if you have any questions as always leave me messages um, there's about 60 or 70 questions that I haven't been able to answer as of late directly on my videos so I think we're probably well overdue for a Q&A session. I think I said that last time when we did the Ketchco reveal. A lot of people ask me why I teach this. Some might even consider it to be a secret. I don't consider it a secret. Just uh, trying to help you guys get a little bit more proficient with your craft, what you're doing. If you have a mind to do it, you will definitely do it. If you don't, then you won't. It's as simple as that. And it does not pain me one bit to give you some knowledge and help share what I know. I just wish I had more time to do it for sure. Now, remember this little thing that was like a crawl, a thorn in my side? You find something that looks similar to it and you spray it and then it's gone. This is like the perfect pattern to fix stuff. It's like Big Gus fixing a tattoo. It can be done. That's why I don't, I don't stress about the stuff that I used to stress over. Um, there's really nothing that can't be undone or redone or worst case scenario, you drop it on the floor and it's got dog hair or something crazy all over it. Um, you wash it off and start again this is this is the most zen thing to do and I hear and I used to I used to be the same way man I would stress if I screwed something up oh my gosh not necessarily a day ruiner but I would be discouraged and now it's just like oh I can fix that and you guys can too if you mess up a pattern, that's all right. There's more baits. You, you can paint yours white again and start all over. Nothing wrong. You just lose a little bit of time, but you gain a lot of knowledge because every mistake... Okay, here we'll, we'll go. We'll, we'll bomb rock. You guys are waiting for it. There are no mistakes. Just happy little accidents. How's that? It's my very best Bob Ross today. I'm not really struggling to talk to you guys today. Um, if it sounds like I'm in a weird way. So let me tell you how my day is gone. I don't want to definitely, I definitely don't want to ruin your day. Um, it's been a really good day overall. My mom is in town and I'm so blessed to have her close to me in our lives again. She has uh, found a home and she's going to be going to closing on Friday. So there's some really good things that are happening in my life right now. Um, very excited about stuff like that. Uh, this morning, um, little, little sad thing. I don't even know if I should talk about it. But anyway, somebody who was 
loved in the swim bait community um, has passed on um, by their own hand and it's I never know whether to talk about stuff like this or not talk about it but I think I'm choosing to talk about this and say it in the video because if any of you are ever struggling and you're ever in need and it just seems like you can't go on please reach out please don't be too full of pride to ask for help or or not give up if there's a way to find another sunset and pet your dog again then please try to reach out um, regardless of what your struggle is I, I can't ever profess to know what's in somebody's mind but I'll leave you my phone number I will get back to you I will talk to you if you message me and say I'm in dire straits and I'm really I need help please help me we'll answer you the, the community will answer you we'll get through it together please don't give up on yourself it's um it's hard for you you can't come back from that um, and it's very hard on on your loved ones as well parents shouldn't outlive their children but sometimes that happens so please if you're considering something dark or desperate i'm going to post the suicide hotline for you guys right now had to stop to change the battery so just real quick this is what the office is looking like these days We have gotten through our basics. Now we just need to add a little bit of touch up to it, make it pop a little more, and we've got ourselves 33 baits in a run in under two hours. That ain't bad. So what's left to do? I'm gonna put the black up. I'm gonna pull detail black magenta down. And some raw umber. The raw umber is gonna go on first. Can crank our pressure back up for the next couple of steps. Raw umber is sort of a cross between green and brown. Uh, it's a little bit of both. So I'm just gonna, it's just gonna darken up a little bit. Nice and light. The detail is more of a transparent color, it's a wicked color. And again, we're going from one side to the other. Not hitting a whole lot on here. Just want to give that little bit of depth. And every time you add a layer, as long as it's consistent, it's just adding depth into the pattern. You now, if you have something that looks darker on top, add a couple of transparent layers of detail colors like this raw umber or detail black magenta a little goes a long way so you don't really want to blast it just a couple of swipes at it across the top and back and you'll be bright as rain in no time flat just one and back one and back something else that I see in here and I'm not going to do any special super tricky colors on this one it's stuff that's readily accessible to everybody but one thing that I see in this is just a little flash of gold little shimmer in there so we're gonna mimic that with just a little pearl gold There's no particular order you need to go in at this point. You've already got your, your basic pattern down. You just are touching up and deepening your pattern. 
going from plain Jane to oh cool and we'll finish it up with some oh wow you see how every time that I add something in it gets a little bit darker and a little bit more realistic And if you guys are playing along at home on one or two, maybe you're not doing a run of 33 like this one, but I hope that I've been able to teach you a couple of things today, at least about the production aspect of it and how to quicken yourself on basic patterns. Out. Always keep your paint at an arm's length if you're trying to be a little faster and get through more in a day. Anybody that uses these Wicked colors, you notice that some of the detail colors have a particular odor to them, a little bit different than some of the other colors. I I've noticed that. Now we're just finishing it up. And if you can do this, know where your airbrush is hitting. And know how much paint to put in your cup. You should be good to go. You still should have a little bit of transparency on this. Just differentiate between the black and the detail black magenta and the raw umber. I've loaded just a little bit of pearl copper. And we're going to go one, two, one, two. Just a quick shot across the cheeks. One, two, one, two. One, two, all the way down the line. side so the hard part's done this little bit of detailing super easy quick to get through and in no time you can be a pro yes I am getting the copper on the eyes but we're gonna come back with black and hit the eyes again on the ones that have eyes. And this should last through the entire 33 here. You don't want you don't want to hit it real hard. Just a real light one, two. That side again. One, two. That's it. Last 
two. There you have it. Just about a little bit extra, but almost exactly enough to do the entire run. And we're going to do one more cool thing. It's not the first trick that I've showed you, but it's a cool trick for this. So, I think I'm going to use this one. These are color shifters. These are legit color shifters. I uh, have not shown you them in any other video that I've used, but I've been using them for a long time and a lot of artists use them. If you haven't, now's your opportunity to figure out whether or not this is for you. They are expensive. There's not a legit color shifter in the game that's not pricey. But you can go from zero to hero uh, relatively quick. And I'll show them to you dry as well. Just on the forehead. And then we'll come back and touch up these black eyes. And that's the pattern. It's 33 baits in under two hours. Not bad. Not bad at all. Can you guys see this going on? You guys see that? It's crazy. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Vallejo color shifters. This is what makes the difference in a pattern. Two more, and done. Last but not least, we want those eyes to be jet black and not super shiny. So we're going to come by, we're going to reduce our pressure way, way, way down, 15 roughly. And then we're just going to take the baits that have eyes on them already. And just darken that in. Don't need to spend a whole lot of time on that either. I just want to kind of get the sheen off of there. For now. I'm going to clear coat them anyways, but... those eyes to stand out but it's just one color at a time one pattern at a time as many of these little or however you hold your baits if you hang them I'm not sure how you guys have your stuff set up this is how I have mine set up and lo and behold there you have it Go. 
I am not going to show you the clear coat process. It's just as quick. We're going to dip on these, obviously, because they're just single units. So we will be hitting that KBS. I hope I've been able to teach you guys at least a couple of different tricks this time around. Um, live life to the fullest. Never give up on it. Anything is possible. If you can dream it, you can do it. That's all I got for you guys this time. Thank you so much for hanging out on the channel and spending some time with Jekyll Bates. Love each and every one of you. If you're struggling one more time at the end of this video, I will be putting the Suicide Prevention Hotline in there for you. God bless and have a great day.